Hey friends, what's up? This is Kat and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, it's been a while, it's been a long time, I know it, but in the past month, I don't know what happened to me, I kind of felt like I wanted to go back in content creating, in video making, in doing booktube, bookstagram, and more importantly, I felt like I want to go back to reading. I'm just really so happy about it, I'm so giddy about it, and I'm excited to share with you again this whole journey that I have with reading and all the other stuff. So anyway, just a few disclaimer before we move on to the topic of this video. First off, there's going to be a background noise. It's hot right now, so my electric fan is working. Working? <laughs> it's functioning at the moment, so it's like the buzzing noise that you can hear. And also, there's like background noises from the outside. And second is, I am going to speak in Tagalog and English in this video because we're going to talk about the Filipino books that I've read in August. So actually, I've read nine books in August, but three of them are non-Filipino, so I'm not going to include them in this video. Alright, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into the books! I'm so excited! Okay, so as I've said, we're going to talk about the six books by Filipino authors that I've read in August, and I wasn't really intending to do that prior August. Like, Hindi ko siya talaga pinlano, guys. Like, it's spontaneous lang naisip ko. Why not read all my books by Filipino authors na nasa shelf ko pa rin hanggang ngayon na hindi ko pa rin siya nababasa. But, spoiler alert, I've... <laughs> I ended up buying another box by Filipino authors, which also are not planned. So now, what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you all the six books in the order that I enjoyed them or I love them. So, we start tayo sa pinaka-least like or least favorite go on this list and then we're going to end with my most favorite and the one that entered my favorites list of the year. I'm so excited. Let's just get into this bago pa umulan ng malakas kasi medyo naririnig ko na yung ambon-ambon guys. So, my least favorite or least liked book in this stack is Halina Filipina by Arnold Ares. So, this is a graphic novel. Actually, guys, spontaneously ko lang tong nakita sa Fully Book. Like, I was browsing with my friend Eman, and we were in Fully Book BGC. Tapos nakita ko to, and it reminded me of the Philippine Lit that we studied in high school. The title was New Yorker in Tondo. And this one is A New Yorker in Manila. So it reminded me of that story and I really like that story. So I thought, why not give this one a try? And I actually ended up liking this one as well. But it's just that it's the least of this pile, okay? Yun lang. Disclaimer, walang libro dito na hindi ko gusto. Lahat gusto ko, pero nirang ko lang sila depending on how much I love them. Because... I just want to. So anyway, this graphic novel is about two main characters. They are named Halina and the other one is Chris. So Halina is like a balik bayan. She was raised in the US, in New York particularly. And then she went here in the Philippines on her own. Like, wala siyang kasama, mag-isa lang siya. And she was like trying to understand her roots, uh, the Filipino culture. So magigets na natin na very sheltered. So hindi siya masyadong aware or conscious with our culture. And then she's going to meet this guy named Chris. He is working as a freelance. He's a film critic. He writes critics for films in the Philippines. He also lives by himself but he's on the other end of the stick. So kung si Halina is privileged and sheltered siya at hindi niya alam yung culture na meron talaga tayo sa Philippines. So si Chris naman, he is the one who will represent the underprivileged in our country. So you will see here the representation of someone who commutes. Anong nangyayari pag binabahaba tayo or bumabagyo sa Pilipinas? Ano yung mga struggles na pinagdadaan 
sana natin. Okay, I forgot to say that they are actually going to have a romantic kind of tension. This is kind of a romance, but it's also contemporary and it is also kind of political. So yeah, anyway, moving on to what I really liked about it. Of course, gusto gusto ko yung representation ni Chris dito kasi parang very relatable. Like, I can resonate with that. I also like how eye-opening it was for Halina as the main character. Another thing that I really liked about this book is the illustration. I think it was just really fantastic. Um, I don't know if you guys can actually see it. Pero yeah, siguro kung color ito, it would be so much better. But even in black and white, I just really liked it. So yeah, something like that. This is my first Arnold Arias work. I've like heard of him before. I also know that he's a great illustrator. But I haven't read any of his books. I'm definitely looking forward for more. What I didn't really like about it, yung resolution niya hindi ko masyadong nakuha. I mean, parang bitin ako dun sa story. Uh, for me, the plot and the characters weren't as fleshed out as I thought it would be. And there are a lot of issues open throughout the story that I didn't get any resolution. So yeah, anyway, I still recommend this book. I just kept on babbling right now. I'm so sorry, we're gonna talk about five more books. So we're going to move on. Alright, so the next book that I'm going to show you, uh, this is actually a read. I first read this book back when I was in college, when I was still in Wattpad. And then this is definitely my most favorite Wattpad story. That when it was published in a physical format, I just grabbed the opportunity to get myself a copy. And I've been wanting to reread this for the longest time. But I don't know why I didn't reread So the book that I'm talking about is A Miracle by Peach X Vision. Ang nakalimutan ko yung okay, author's name is Jasmine Verzosa. Verzosa? Verzosa. <laughs> I love this so much and I wasn't really into romance, especially now that I'm adult. But I thought of just reading it just to check kung parehas pa rin ba yung pagtingin ko. Ano ba? Yung pagkagusto ko sa libro na to because I just really loved it back then. So anyway, this story is romance. As you can see, so we have here two young adult characters named Mary and Nathan. And Mary is like this gothic girl na medyo weird sa community nila. Like, in their neighborhood and then in their school, um, medyo iniiwasan siya ng mga tao. Like, she's an outcast because she dresses differently. And then also, probably the way that she behaves. And then she's going to meet Nathan, who is a transferee in their neighborhood, in their village, and their school. And they're going to be friends. Of course, their relationship will evolve from friendship to something romantic. Things that I really like about this book, of course, the character and the plot itself. Medyo cliche yung plot niya, especially if you have read a lot of Wattpad stories before, like, she's dating the gangster or dying ng panget. But at the same time, it still works for me. I don't know what what's in this book, like in this story. I don't know what's with the character or the way that this was written, but it still made me feel a lot of emotions. I also like the idea that Mary was an outcast because for me, representation matters. And I think her representation was executed well in the story. So I just love it. I just love her character so much and I just want to protect her character a lot. Like, parang gusto kong gawin silang kapatid ganyan. Tapos gusto ko silang protectahan. Mga ganong level. What I didn't really like about it, ayun, masyado siyang cliche. There are also some scenes in here that I think are a little bit too cliche and medyo cringy na siya at some point. Pero hindi ko talaga alam. Nag-work talaga siya sa akin. So I still really, really like this book. It's just that madami kasi akong favorites ngayong buwan. So kaya, nandito to sa number 5. Okay, but I still really like this. Let's move on. Okay, next on my list, this is also a reread, but I still liked it, I still loved it, and I still consider it as one of my favorite series. And that is Si Jana Silang at Ang Chanak ng Tabon by Edgar Calabia Samar. So I 
first read this book when I was already in booktube and you all know that. This is also one of my most favorite Filipino books in 2020 and I still stand by everything that I've said in all those videos and reviews that I've done in the past and sobrang excited ko pa din na basahin ulit yung mga susunod na libro because I'm going to reread the second and the third book before I move on to the fourth and the fifth one. And what I really love about this reread is I've annotated! Oh my god! Alam nyo, nung nag-annotate ako sa libro na to, parang mas na-appreciate ko yung storyline, mas na-appreciate ko yung world building. Pero, yun nga, syempre yung mga plot twists, hindi na ako nagulat kasi alam ko na sila. But also, at the same time, I realized that mas nakikita mo yung mga foreshadowing in the first part of the book when you already know what's going to happen. Like, you have seen like the little things na hindi mo napapansin before. So, that's why I also love your reading. So basically, if you don't know what this book is all about, it's a YA series. It's written in Filipino. So it follows the story of Jano Silang. And Jano Silang is 15, ba siya nag start to? 14? Mga ganon. He is a player of this game called Tala. And Tala is like a game that was created by Filipino creators. Para siyang dot and then yung mga characters, protagonists, villains in the game are also based on Philippine myth and folklore. So that's why the game was very, very interesting. And then the story will start when one night Janus is playing this game and something strange is going to happen. And that's where the story will unfold. So of course, tulad din ng mga nabanggit ko na before, I really, really love how this whole story was created. It was so solid for me. The way that that Edgar Calabio Samar truly redefined Philippine myth and folklore. It's just so good. What I really didn't like about this book and this series in particular, I said to in my reviews ko dati, but I just didn't really like how the romance are going on with a lot of characters. And also, there are times that it's confusing yung storytelling. I didn't realize when I read it. Like, the structure of the storytelling are not flowing that smoothly. Lalo na kapag ka, it is like a perspective from a character, siya yung nagkikwento. So medyo magulo yung storytelling niya. Lalong gumugulo yung story sa utak ko. So hindi ko alam kung personal lang ba yun na hindi ko kagad nagigets. Hindi na kukuha ng brain cells ko. Or it has to be really improved. But yeah, in the end, I still like this book. I still loved it. And I am still going to continue with the series. For me, the author is still a great storyteller. So yeah, we're going to move on to the next one. Number three on this list. This one, I don't have a physical copy. Just because. So this one is a book that I've read in ebook. Kasi kaka-release pa lang niya, I think, two, three months ago. And I don't know if you already have a physical copy here in the Philippines. So this book is... Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. Um, this is a thriller that was recommended to me by a bookstagram friend who is Aubrey Jewel. And hindi ko masyadong unexpect na magugustuhan ko to ng sobra, 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 sobra. So this is my first time to read a book from her, but I already know that she is a Filipino diaspora. I think she lives in Canada. So anyway, as I've said earlier, this book is a thriller. It follows the story of Paris Peralta. And Paris is a wife of this very famous comedian in the US. And then the story will start when her husband was found dead in the bathtub. And nandun din siya sa crime scene during that time. And then of course, ma-accuse siya na siya yung pumatay sa husband niya. So there's also another timeline in here wherein we're going to follow the story of another Filipino immigrant who in the past, during the 1980s, she was accused of murdering a lover in Canada. So, dalawa yung timeline dito and dalawa yung main characters who coincidentally pareha sila ng pinagdadaalan. And then later on in the book, you're going to find out the connection between these two stories. And for me, the way that this book was written was just so good. Like the structure of it, the dual timeline, the way that it builds around tension and mystery. Like, sino ba talaga yung pumatay? Bakit siya nakulong? Anong nangyayari? So there's so much question in this book. And I was kind of regretting that I didn't have it in physical copy because I would have probably written my questions. And siguro nag-ano din ako doon, naglalagay ako ng theories ko, guys. 
ganyan. And then, there's a lot of plot twists in here that I was really so surprised. When it comes to like entertainment value, pacing, how much that I enjoy it, this is definitely a favorite book. I can definitely see that this is like a 5 out of 5 stars if I'm rating books. But because I have other factors or elements that I'm also considering into, I don't think that it's gonna be like a favorite, favorite thriller of mine. But I just enjoyed it so, so much. So, kung mahili ka sa thriller, if you like mystery, if you want like who done it kind of you know basic plot this is a good one just to clarify pala before i move on to another book i don't think that this book in particular aims to represent filipino or our culture so hindi ko siya nire recommend because of the filipino characters i'm just saying that they're filipinos and i'm just glad to read a thriller that has filipino characters but it, it's in no way a representation or anything like that it's just that i just loved it and i just loved it it is written by Filipino and it has Filipino characters. That's it. Wala siyang masyadong kineme. Hindi ko masyadong explain but I hope that it makes sense that you're getting my point and um, that you are going to read it not because there are Filipino characters but because it's a great thriller. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Let's move on to the next books. Okay, if you noticed anything, any changes in my setup or in me, it's because I took a break, like a few minutes before continuing with this video. So now let's move on to my next book, which is number two on this list. All right, this book I am super, oh my God, super duper excited to share with you because this is definitely one of the most surprising reads that I had for the year. And this is 17 Prayers to the Many-Eyed Mother by Eliza Victoria. Eliza Victoria continues to surprise me. For me, this book is unexpectedly so freaking good. Like, hindi ko expect how much I will like this, how much I will devour each of the story. So if you don't know anything about this, this is a collection of short stories, 17 short stories to be exact. These stories have a specific theme of humans resorting to supernatural beings or supernatural elements that are also based on our myth and folklore. So basically, the problem with anthologies kasi, hindi lahat ng stories magugustuhan mo, right? So just like any anthologies out there, of course, I have favorite stories in here. The titles are The Missing, After the Crash, When I Die, I Want You to Have All of My Stuff, Premium, Fairy Tales, and Let Me Hold Your Hand. Yeah, those are my favorite ones. I've actually highlighted it here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I hope it will see. Ah, may kita nyo din yung nails ko. Kulang, kulang na siya. And then the rest are just stories that are so good as well. They are all written so well, but I think the stories that became my favorites are the ones that I can resonate with and I can see myself in some parts of it and really affected me emotionally. So probably yun yung reason bakit number two ko to sa list kasi hindi ko siya masabi like a favorite, favorite, favorite book out there because of like the different feelings that I had with the stories. But generally, this is going to be on my Liked It A Lot tier. So I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's weird, it's eerie, it's creepy, it's hunting, it's beautiful. Those are the, the words that I could use to describe this book and I just love it. But also, just please be aware that there are a lot of like heavy topics in here. I hope that you would check out Trigger Warnings before reading this book. Okay, so we are on to our last one. This is the book that I consider as my favorite read of August and also one of my favorite reads of the year. And this is going to be a no surprise if you have been following me since 2020 kasi pa ulit-ulit kong sinasabi na favorite author ko tong author na to. And this is Desaparecidos by Luwalhati Bautista. I truly and seriously think that this is my favorite book of her. So in case you don't know what this is about, this is like a historical fiction that follows a dual timeline. So yung unang timeline is in the present where in this main character named Anna 
is trying to narrate or tell the story of the past. So yun yung second timeline which is set during martial law. It also has a story of family because madaming tao, madaming buhay, pamilya na ang naapektuhan ng martial law. So isa to sa pinakamagandang storytelling for me. Um, even though it's fiction, I am 99.9% sure that there are a lot of stories like this in real life. And it's just really graphic. So even though I love this book so, so much, and even though I love how it was written, I also acknowledge the fact that it is triggering. It's not for everyone. It has graphic depiction of abuse, murder, torture, of violence, of rape and sexual assault. Like it has so much going on. But this one is a story. This one encapsulates what happened to a lot of people during martial law what happened to their families decades after. Hindi lang siya tungkol sa nangyari ng martial law, pero ito rin yung nagpapakita na may tinatawag tayong generational trauma na hindi lang sila yung naapektuhan during the time, but also the generations after them. And it was a very, very important read. And I just love it. I also tabbed and annotated on this book. Ang dami kong favorite quotes dito. And kung pinafollow mo ko sa Instagram, you have probably seen some of it because I posted it a few few weeks ago I think so yeah I love this book it's definitely one of my favorite reads of the year it's up there and I think through this book my respect and my love and my admiration for Luwal Hati Bautista notched into another level because I sobrang <laughs> di ko na explain as in sobrang in awe like I am in awe of this book so yeah that's it so here are all the books that I've read in August that are written by Filipino authors. And as I've said, I truly, truly enjoyed my time while reading all these books. So if you've reached this part, let me know what's your favorite read in August. Kahit hindi in Filipino authors or kahit hindi in Filipino books, just share it to me sa comment section. And I hope to see you on the next one. But that's it for this video. I hope that you are safe, you're healthy, you're dry, because right now it's rainy season in the Philippines. And I hope that you always know that the world is yours for the reading. Bye! See you next time!